Welcome to the Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and in this video we're talking about the Panama men's national soccer team's history. Pull up a seat and let's start the discussion. Panama is a country located on the very southern edge of Central America. It has a population of about 4.2 million people. Panama is a member of CONCACAF, which is the North and Central American as well as Caribbean Confederation in FIFA. The national team plays its home matches at the Estadio Romel Fernandez Stadium in Panama City that holds about 29,000 people. The Panamanian Football Federation, or Federación Panameña de Football, which is its official name in Spanish, is abbreviated as FEPAFUT. It was created in 1937, and due to the political and economic climate in Panama, the FEPAFUT was poorly organized until about the 1990s. The organization finally got its act together and began organizing with long-term plans at this time. It created youth academies and laid the foundations for soccer around the new millennium, and the team today is a result of this long-term planning. The national team has two nicknames, Marea Roja and El Equipo Canalero. The Marea Roja nickname means the red tide. It comes from the country's kit color and the fact that it touches two oceans. And the other nickname means the canal team, which obviously comes from the important Panama Canal that is located in the country. The Panamanian Football Federation's crest is a shield with a soccer ball in the middle of it. The soccer ball comes from the sport that the federation governs. At the top of the shield is the abbreviation for the Federation of FEPAFUT. In the background of the shield are the main elements of the national flag of Panama. The flag was created and adopted on July 4th, 1904. The blue and red colors symbolize the two main political parties in the country, with the white symbolizing peace between them. And the stars were inspired by the United States after the U.S. supported Panama's independence movement from Colombia in the early 20th century. Lastly, I'm not exactly sure about the wreath-looking thing under the crest, so if you happen to have more details, please let us know in the comments section below the video. The country of Panama has appeared at one World Cup Finals tournament, including the 2018 World Cup. The 2018 World Cup will be its debut tournament. So, however it does at the 2018 World Cup will be its best ever finish. From a continental competition perspective, Panama qualified for one CONCACAF championship and eight CONCACAF Gold Cups. The CONCACAF Championship was the tournament played between 1963 and 1989 before it rebranded as the Gold Cup. Its best ever finish at a CONCACAF Championship came in 1963 when it made the group stage but was eliminated, and it came in second place in the CONCACAF Gold Cup on two occasions, once in 2005 and once in 2013. Panama qualified for the 2018 World Cup by coming in third place in the final round of CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. It has been placed in Group G for the 2018 World Cup group stage. As we touched on earlier in the video, Panama has only recently gotten its act together as a soccer nation, so for this reason there's not too many historical players to highlight and there's also not a ton of information about them. Having said that, I'm going to highlight three of those players right now. Romel Fernandez played for the Panamanian national team from the mid-1980s until his tragic death in 1993. He played club soccer in Spain's first and second division, working his way up to eventually sign for Valencia in 1991. He didn't have a great time in his one season with Valencia before a tragic car accident cut his life short on May 6th, 1993. He was a very talented and could have gone on to become the best Panamanian player ever. The next two players I'd like to discuss are actually twins, Jorge and Julio Deli Valdez. Both had somewhat of a journeyman career playing all over the world, but Julio was slightly more successful. He played in Serie A, Ligue 1, and La Liga, scoring many goals along the way. Jorge played all over South America before making his way to Japan and having a brief stint in MLS in North America. Since retiring, the brothers have moved into coaching roles, often serving on the same staff. And for the 2018 World Cup squad, the star player is going to be Gabriel Gomez. He plays for Atletico Bucaramanga in Colombia. He's a strong, combative center midfielder. He'll be Panama's rock in the middle of the pitch. And a breakout player to watch out for is going to be Ismael Diaz. He is a 21-year-old winger and plays for RC Deportivo Fabril in the Spanish third tier. It's not the highest level of club soccer, but he's got a bright future and a good performance at this tournament could mean a move to a bigger club for him. 
So Panama doesn't have any real rivals we were able to identify in our research. If you have any thoughts or suggestions on possible rivals, please let us know in the comment section below the video. Panama's all-time record appearance holder is Gabriel Gomez with 139 caps at time of recording. He's still an active player and likely to add to that tally. And the country's record goal scorer is Luis Tejada who has 42 goals at time of recording. He is also still an active player and likely to add to that tally. And one last interesting fact for you about Panama. Panama didn't have a fully professional soccer league until 1988 which is long after most other countries had formed fully professional soccer leagues. So there you have it, a bit of history on the Panamanian men's national soccer team. If you have anything else to add to the discussion, please let us know in the comment section below the video. Thanks for stopping by the Soccer Tavern. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers!